Did you know that of all the sensory systems of a bass, hearing is perhaps the most versatile? It's true. Even when vision is obscured as the clarity of water changes and the days turn to darkness or as a clean body of water flows into mud, the hearing functions of a bass adapt and remain extremely sharp. Now this system is so precise that it enables a bass to hear sounds that we cannot hear. And most of these sounds trigger a reaction. Now, that's something we're gonna talk a lot about today as we fish along. So, I'm gonna get this boat in the water and meet you out on the lake. So come on and join me, okay? One type sound will signal the approach of a bait fish. Another may arouse curiosity. Fear brought on by other sounds may send the bass to deeper depths or the safety of the nearest cover. Because sounds do affect bass, that knowledge can be put to good use by fishermen. Whoa, buddy. Might be coming around on that side, are you? I think he just realized he was hooked. Easy. Easy does it. Easy does it. There he comes. Ooh, what a nice one. Whoop. Come on back. Come up here. Oh boy, what a pretty fish. Whoo. What a nice one. Woo! Yes, sir. What a nice one. Woo! Basically, sounds transmitted into the water can either repel or attract bass. Now, the trick, of course, is to avoid driving them away with the wrong kind of sound. And instead, what you want to do is to arouse their curiosity or gain their attention with the right kind of sound. We know that sound travels five times faster in the water than it does in air. And we're also aware that bass are extremely sensitive to a wide range of frequencies. Interestingly enough, you seldom see a bass make a mistake and charge toward an alarming sound. He immediately moves away from it. Yet a lure with an attractive sound like the lure we're using today attracts his attention and he'll charge it without any hesitation, provided the correct presentation is made at the correct depth. Come down. Easy. How'd you want those hooks? fat thing. You know, a fish in clear water has a tendency to want to go down. I mean, they just, they want to go to the bottom just, and they pull so hard. Whereas in an off-color environment, they want to come up. Okay, let me tell you a mistake that many beginning anglers make, especially when they're fishing shallow water. And that is, they cast directly alongside or on top of the cover where the bass are, you know, laying or lying. And unfortunately, the angler seldom sees the results of his effort. You never want to do that. A better approach is to cast beyond your target if possible, and then cover that area during the retrieve. What you want to do is try to cover the back, the side, and the front, all on one cast. That's when you're fishing shallow cover. But like I say today, we're fishing much, much deeper. Where are you going there, boy? Nice one. Ooh.
All right, now just go easy here. You barely hooked. Just say, ah, uh, for me. Just like that. Get that big fish blind in one eye. If it's okay, he had one eye to see that rig, didn't he? As stated earlier, it's important to remember that sound travels five times faster in water than it does in air, at a rate of approximately one mile per second. Because water is an excellent conductor of sound waves, but a very poor transmitter of light waves, bass have been blessed with an exceptionally good sense of hearing. Although bass don't have ear flaps like we do, they do have ears and mighty good ones. The hearing apparatus of a bass is a highly developed sense organ so sensitive that it can sense the noise of a crawfish moving about. A bass's ears are buried on either side of its head in roughly the same position in which our own inner ears are found, but much closer together. Unlike us, bass do not have eardrums and the ears are not open to the water on the outside. Sounds are transmitted directly from the water through the skin, flesh, and bone of the bass's head to the ears. Now ichthyologists claim that one clue to extremely sensitive hearing in certain species like the bass is the internal connection between the ear and the swim bladder. Because the swim bladder is a gas filled chamber enclosed by an elastic membrane, it serves as an underwater microphone and amplifier all rolled into one. The bladder picks up vibration from the water and transmits them directly to the ear. There's no doubt about it, highly sensitive hearing is a valuable asset to the hunted as well as the hunter. Here he comes, flying right at me, right under the boat. There he goes out. A good fish too. Stripping line. Way out there. Where are you going, buddy? Oh yeah. Hooked in the bottom of the face. But I'll take him. Any way I can get him. Easy. Easy. Open your mouth. Whoa, up under the chin. He hit at it. Oh, he, how to do. You know, knowing how sensitive hearing is to a bass, you might just wonder just how important is sound that is carried into the air, such as normal conversation between fishermen. Well, this really doesn't affect bass at all simply because the water's surface reflects 99.9% .9 of the sound energy in the air. Now here's something you might find really interesting. Bass not only hear sounds, but they feel sounds. A bass hears high frequency sound waves through the inner ear and feels low frequency sounds through its lateral line. At approximately 40 feet, high frequency sound waves from a lure reaches the bass's inner ear. However, the bass may not be able to clearly distinguish or identify the sound of a lure at this distance, simply because of other underwater sounds traveling through the water. Now at a distance of 20 feet, the bass relies on both the inner ear and heavily on the lateral line. Since the lateral line is directional, a bass can detect and sense the direction of the lure quite well. Now some scientists refer to the lateral line as the sense of distant touch. It's almost as if the bass could reach out and feel. Bass can locate sound in a restricted range using the lateral line detector. At distances beyond 20 feet, they detect sounds with the inner ear but cannot locate the source without swimming a search pattern or until the sounds come closer. Once the sound is heard and then felt, 
It's close enough for the fish to make the final decision to attack or let it go by. And this decision is guided solely by eyesight. Like I've said so many times, to catch a bass, you must first catch its eye. Sound and smell may cause the initial response, but vision is the number one sense. It is paramount. You know, why is sound so important? Well, first of all, only a small percentage of your cast will land next to a fish, but many of your cast, a ton of them, are going to land within 40 feet of a bass. For that reason, it's smart, very smart, to make several casts to the same location, especially if you're fishing in stained and murky water and during low light conditions. Not a big one. Here we go, here we go, where do we stop? Nobody knows. Here we go, here we go. Where's he stop? Nobody knows. You know, there's very little doubt that sound, with all its ramifications, is a critical factor in the life of a bass. And it's equally critical from a fisherman's standpoint. As a fisherman, it's smart to be aware of the effects of sound and make them work for you. Pump. Let me get this out there and that out right, right here and say thank you. Little fatty right there. Let me say again, the Booyah rig is a remarkable lure. And because it's so new, there's so much to learn about all its capabilities. To be honest, I don't believe anglers will discover this rig's real potential for a while. I know that's the way it's going to be with me. But look at all the fun we're going to have. Booyah is rewriting the playbook with this one. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next week. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today.